Krishna, 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 Hari, Hari. 
Vishnabad, Bodhaman Supati Praj, Kacharja, Ashto, Tarasad Sri Srimadi, AC Bhakti Vedanta, Shami Maraj, Prupad, Kite, Anant Koti, Vaishnavind, Kite, Nama Charja, Sri Haridas, Thakur, Kite, Prem Sakaho, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nitaranda, Sri Adwaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi, Gaur Bhakta Vrindaki Jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath, Sham Kund Radha Kundigiri Govardhan Ki Jai, Vrindavan Tham Ki Jai, Navadip Tham Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamana Mai Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrindaki Jai, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Go Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Well, welcome to all. We are reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, Chapter One, and we're starting with Text Sixty Nine. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Ekai Vigraha Yadi Hoi Bahurup Akareta Beda Nahi Ekai Sarup Mahishi Vibahe Yoiche Yoiche Koilo Rash Ihake Kahie Krishna Mokyo Prakash. When the personality of God had expands himself in many forms, all non different in their features, as Lord Krishna did when he married 16,000 queens and when he performed his rasa dance, such forms of the Lord are called manifested forms. Prakash Vigrahas. Om Jnana Timiran Tasya Gyananjana Shadakaya Chakshurin Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gudave Namaha Shri Chaitan Namano Pistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Shayam Rupakada Maiham Tadhati Shapadam Tikam Pande hung Shri Guru Shri Jatapada Kamalang Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Shagrasatam Shagana Raganatan Vitams Tam Sajivam Shadraitam Shavatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitana Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Shagana Lolita, Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha, E Krishna Karuna Sindho, Dina Vandho Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostute, Tapta Kamshana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavane Shri, Prashabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hori Priye, Vansha Kolpatarubhyascha, Krupa Sindho Pyaevacha, Patita Nam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Shadi Gaur Bhaktarinna, Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So as you may recall, Srila Kaviraj Goswami is briefly explaining his first verse. Bande Guru Nisha Bhakta Nishan Ishavatarakan Tat Prakash Hamstra, Tat Shakti. So, uh, Krishna Chaitanya Sangaka. Uh, here, the manifestations of the Lord 
are uh, described. Now I'm just looking to see, I don't think I've jumped behind. I think that correct, right? Where am I, where am I back? Let me just see about my, yeah, I think I'm backwards to tell you the two truth. Let's see where we are. Okay. Let me just, my sense is, and it's always hard for me to know because I read ahead, but my sense is that we've already covered this territory. Have we, or am I, um, well, there's no question about whether I'm confused, but um, have we already covered this? The seems to me we're, we've already covered the prakashas, the manifestations of the Lord, and we went on to the shaktis of the Lord. Uh, does anyone remember better than I do? My page holder, Maharaj, didn't have me any any farther ahead than where you started this evening. But okay, so we'll and if we're covering the same territory twice, well, it's good for us, especially since we don't remember having been here. All right. So Kaviraj Goswami has been describing or uh, elaborating, not even elaborating, touching upon the. Hmm, tattvas that he mentioned in his first verse. And here he's talking about tatprakashamscha, the prakashas of the Lord. Prakash means manifestations. And he has mentioned that the manifestations are of two kinds. One kind is again called prakash, and the other is called vilas. And the distinction between them is that the Prakash forms of the Lord are all identical with one another. And the Vilas forms are slightly different. So uh, we'll, we'll find the Vilas forms, I think, described as we go along. But here the Prakash forms are mentioned. When Krishna expanded himself as 16,000 uh, Krishnas to be with 16,000 queens, Every Krishna was identical with every other Krishna. They were all uh, completely the same. And similarly, when Krishna was rasa dancing with the gopis, every Krishna was identical with every other Krishna. So that's called a prakash manifestation, or the forms are called prakash vigrahas, uh, prakash uh, yes, manifested forms. Prakash means manifest. Chitram baitaita dekena vapusha yuga patpratak graheshu dvasta sahasram striya eka udavahat. It is astounding that Lord Sri Krishna, who is one without a second, expanded himself in 16,000 similar forms to marry 16,000 queens in their respective homes. This verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.69.2. So this verse serves as evidence for the statement that the queens are identical, uh, sorry, the, that when Krishna married the queens, he did so in identical forms or Prakash Vigrahas. Rasotsava sampravritto gopi mandala mandataha yogeshurena krishnena tasam madhye dvayor dvayo. When Lord Krishna, surrounded by groups of cowherd girls, began the festivities of the rasa dance, the Lord of all mystic powers placed himself between each two girls. 
purport, this verse is also quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam, 1033.3. Pravishtena grihitanam kante sva nikatam striyaha yamanyeran yamanyeran nabhastavad vimana shatasankulam devokasam sadaranam atyut Atyot Sukya Britatmanam Tato Dundubio Nedur Nipetu Pushpavrishtayaha. When the cowherd girls and Krishna thus joined together, each girl thought that Krishna was dearly embracing her alone. To behold this wonderful pastime of the Lord's. The denizens of heaven and their wives, all very eager to see the dance, flew in the sky in their hundreds of airplanes. They showered flowers and beat sweetly on drums. This is another quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 1033, 3 and 4. Anekatra prakatata. If numerous forms, all equal in their features, are displayed simultaneously, such, for, such forms are called Prakash Vigrahas of the Lord. Purport. This is a quotation from the Laghu Bhagavatamrita, compiled by Srila Rupa Goswami. So it's a cardinal feature of this Chaitanya Charitamrita that it doesn't merely tell the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but it tells the, it gives a, a compendium of, of Lord Chaitanya's teachings. So here we're hearing teachings about the nature of the Lord's forms with evidence from different authorities. Any questions here? Any questions about these Prakash Vigrahas? Okay. Ekai Vigraha kintu akare hoi an aneka prakasho hoi vilasatar nam. But when uh, the numerous forms are slightly different from one another, they are called vilas vigrahas, pastime forms. Surupa manya karam yat. Tasya Pati Vilasataha Prayen Atma Samam Shaktya Sa Vilaso Nigadyate. When the Lord displays numerous forms with different features by his inconceivable potency, such forms are called Vilas Vigrahas. Another quotation from Lagu. Bhagavatamrita, Sri Rupa Goswami. Yoiche Baladeva Paravyome Narayan, Yoiche Vasudeva Pradum Nadi Sankarshan. Examples of such Vilas Vigrahas are Baldev Narayan in Vaikuntatam and the Chaturbhuha, Vasudev Sankarshan, Pradumna, and Aniruddha. So here these forms are different. Baladev is similar to Krishna, but Krishna is black. Baladev is white. Uh, similarly, Narayan is also Krishna, but he has four arms and Krishna has two arms. So these uh, forms are called Vilas Vigrahas. They're similar to Krishna's original form, but not entirely identical. So now that's as far as 
that's Srila Kaviraj Goswami's synopsis of the uh, Tat Prakash Amstra, of the manifestations of the Lord. Uh, Bande Guru, Guru was discussed at some length. Isha Bhaktan, the devotees of the Lord. Isha, the Lord. Isha Vatarakan, the incarnations of the Lord. Now, Tat Prakash Amstra, the manifestations of the Lord have been described. And now we come to uh, Tat Shakti. Ishre Shakti Hoi, eighteen Prakar, Eka Lakshmi Gun Pude, Mahishi Gun R, Praje Gopi Gun R, Shabhate Pratan, Prajendra Nandan Jate, Swayam Bhagavan. The energies, consorts of the Supreme Lord, are of three kinds. The Lakshmis in Vaikuntha, the Queens in Dwarka, and the Gopis in Vrindavan. The Gopis are the best of all, for they have the privilege of serving Sri Krishna, the primeval Lord, the son of the King of Braja. So the, the shaktis or the feminine counterparts of the Lord are matched to the forms of the Lord. So the gopis are the forms in Goloka Vrindavan. The queens are there in Dwarka and the Lakshmis in Vaikuntha. Swayam Rup Krishna Swayam Rup Krishner Kai Vyuhatar Sham Pokta Shohite Hoi Tahar Avaram. The personal associates of the primeval Lord, Sri Krishna, are his devotees who are identical with him. He is complete with his entourage of devotees. Purport, Sri Krishna and his various personal expansions are non-different in potential power. These expansions are associated with further secondary expansions or servitor expansions who are called devotees. So Swayam uh, Rupa Krishna Kai Vyuha Tarsham, the Lord has various forms which are identical with him, Bhakta Sahite Hoi Tar Avara. And those forms are uh, surrounded by his devotees. It's interesting, the, as far as I could tell, the Bengali says that the forms of the Lord are equal to one another. But Prabhupada makes the point, equally valid, that the devotees are equal with the Lord because they're on the same spiritual platform even though the Lord remains the predominator and the devotees are the predominated servants. Prabhin has written, the demigods could see the rasa dance, although they have enjoying mentality, they could see the rasa dance. Or are these demigods different from the rest? Well, it appears that Krishna wanted to give special mercy to the demigods. So whatever their uh, shortcomings, uh, the Lord thought, all right, let them see. I, I don't have more to say than that. Does anyone else have a contribution on that point? The servants of the Lord get special mercy. The demigods, although they may have uh, may sometimes be bewildered and what have you. Still, they're servants of the Lord, and the Lord can choose to give them special favor. Okay. Bhakta Adi Krame Koila Shabhar Bandan E Shabhar Bandan Sarva Shuper Karan. 
Now I have worshiped all the various levels of devotees. Worshiping them is the source of all good fortune. Purport, to offer prayers to the Lord, one should first offer prayers to his devotees and associates. So we see that the Kaviraj Goswami has followed this method of approaching the Lord by first offering respect to the Lord's various uh, features. Uh, I think Krishna Kontia needs to mute. Um, first offering obeisances, respect to his various features. Pratam shloke kohi samanya mangala choran tutiya shloke te kori vishesha bandha. In the first verse, I have, invoked, I have invoked a general benediction. But in the second, I have prayed to the Lord in a particular form. So now Kaviraj says, uh, Goshami says, in effect, I've uh, reviewed the first verse. Now let's go on to the second verse that with which I began this work. Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nitananda Sahodito Gaudiya Pushpavanto Chitro Shando Tamonito. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Shri Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nitananda, who are like the sun and moon. They have arisen simultaneously on the horizon of Goda to dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benediction upon all. So uh, astonishingly, the sun and the moon have risen at the same time to uh, shine light upon the uh, dark world. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nitananda Prabhu have appeared to spread their benedictions everywhere. Brajaye Bihare, Brajaye Bihare Purbe, Krishna Balaram, Koti Surya Chandra Jini Dohar Nijataham. Sri Krishna and Balaram, the personalities of Godhead, who formerly appeared in Vrindavan and were millions of times more effulgent than the sun and moon, have arisen over the eastern horizon of Gauradesh, West Bengal, being compassion for the fallen state of the world. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Ar Prabhu Nitananda Jahar Prakashe Sarva Jagat Ananda. The appearance of Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Prabhu Nitananda has surcharged the world with happiness. Surja Chandra Hade Yoiche Shab Andakar Bastu Prakashiya Kode Tarmir Prachar. As the sun and moon drive away darkness by their appearance and reveal the nature of everything, these two brothers dissipate the darkness of ignorance covering the living beings and enlighten them with knowledge of the absolute truth. Agyana Tomer Nam Kohie Koitab Dharmar Takama Moksha Bancha Adishab. The darkness of ignorance is called Koitaba, the way of cheating, which begins with religiosity, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. Dharma pro chitta koitabo trapadamo nir matsaranam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam, tapatrayon mulanam, Srimad Bhagavate Mahamunikrite, Kimva parar isharaha, 
Sadyo Ridyavarudyate, Chakrati V, Shushu Shudhi Stachanat. The great scripture, Srimad Bhagavatam, compiled by Mahamuni Vyasdev from four original verses, describes the most elevated and kind hearted devotees and completely rejects the cheating ways of materially motivated religiosity. It propounds the highest principle of eternal religion, which can factually mitigate the threefold miseries of a living being and award the highest benediction of full prosperity and knowledge. Those willing to hear the message of this scripture in a submissive attitude of service can at once capture the Supreme Lord in their hearts. Therefore, there is no need for any scripture other than Srimad Bhagavatam. Purport, this verse appears in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.2. The words Mahamuni Krite indicate that Srimad Bhagavatam was compiled by the great sage Vyasdev, who is sometimes known as Narayan Mahamuni because he is an incarnation of Narayan. Vyasdev, therefore, is not an ordinary man, but is empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He compiled the beautiful Bhagavatam to narrate some of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his devotees. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, a distinction between real religion and pretentious religion has been clearly made. According to this original and genuine commentation on the Vedanta Sutra, there are numerous pretentious faiths that pass as religion, but neglect the real essence of religion. The real religion of a living being is his natural inborn quality, whereas pretentious religion is a form of nescience that artificially covers a living entity's pure consciousness under certain unfavorable conditions. Real religion lies dormant when artificial religion dominates from the mental plane. A living being can awaken this dormant religion by hearing with a pure heart. The path of religion prescribed by Srimad Bhagavatam is different from all forms of imperfect religiosity. Religion can be considered in the following three divisions. One, the path of fruitive work. Two, the path of knowledge and mystic powers. And three, the path of worship and devotional service. The path of fruitive work, karmakanda, even when decorated by religious ceremonies, meant to elevate one's material condition is a cheating process because it can never enable one to gain relief from material existence and achieve the highest goal. A living entity perpetually struggles hard to rid himself of the pangs of material existence, but the path of fruitive work leads him to either temporary happiness or temporary distress in material existence. By pious fruit of work, one is placed in a position where he can temporarily feel material happiness, whereas vicious activities lead him to a distressful position of material want and scarcity. However, 
even if one is put into the most perfect situation of material happiness, he cannot in that way become free from the pangs of birth, death, old age, and disease. A materially happy person is therefore in need of the eternal relief that mundane religiosity in terms of fruitive work can never award. We'll just uh, pause for a second there. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nitananda Prabhu have come to deliver real religion as distinct from Kaitava Dharma. Uh, Kaitava means cheating, cheating religion. The second verse of the Bhagavatam says that cheating religion is kicked out of Bhagavad Dharma. And Srila Sridhar Swami has commented that Kaitava Dharma means Dharma Artha Kama Moksha, these four Purusharthas, as they called, or goals in human life. For the pure devotee, these goals are not very ambitious goals or uh, valuable goals. They're mm, distractions and they're sources of entanglement. They will never satisfy the living being. You don't mind if I take a, the 20 second break and get a little water, right? Okay, I'll be back in 20 seconds, give or take a few. Okay. Moving forward. The paths of the culture of knowledge, Ganamarg, and of mystic powers, Yogamarg, are equally hazardous. For one who does not know where, for one does not know where one will go by following these uncertain methods. An empiric philosopher in search of spiritual knowledge may endeavor most laboriously for many, many births in mental speculation. But unless and until he reaches the stage of the purest quality of goodness. In other words, until he transcends the plane of material speculation, it is not possible for him to know that everything emanates from the personality of Godhead, Vasudev. His attachment to the impersonal feature of the Supreme Lord makes him unfit to rise to that transcendental stage of Vasudev understanding. And therefore, because of his unclean state of mind, he glides down again into material existence, even after having ascended to the highest stage of liberation. This fall down takes place due to his want of a locus standi in the service of the Supreme Lord. Hmm. So that statement is there in uh, Bhagavatam. Ye ye ravindaksha vimukta maninas. There are those who think themselves perfectly liberated. Tvayastapavad avishuddha bhutaya. But whose consciousness is not perfectly pure. Agruya krishtrena parampadam tataha. By 
strenuous endeavor, they may uh, merge into the impersonal effulgence of the Lord. But uh, the Aruya Krishna Paramparam Tata Patanchitho Nadrati Yushmanandre. But again, they fall down because of neglecting the personality of Godhead. Uh, all right, Tulsi Priya has a hand up. Jai Maharaj. I, I would like to be sure that I understand what speculation is. Like when I, my understanding is like, you think about philosophers who are coming up with different theories of the absolute truth, but I'm, I'm wondering if there's something more specific and more technical that I just have never thought about until this moment. Well, particularly Srila Prabhupada identifies speculation as uh, a mental path that leads one to an impersonal outcome, an impersonal goal. That's particularly what we mean. Uh, otherwise, we've sometimes heard that uh, there's a distinction between uh, what is that philosophical speculation and some other kind of speculation. Yes. Hmm? Yeah. Mental speculation and philosophical speculation. And that the but the idea is that that if you by speculation you desert, you determine Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Krishna is everything, good. Your speculation was fine. But if you arrive at a an impersonal um, target, then that's like poison. Uh, that kind of speculation is, is poisonous. And that's usually where we go with speculation because of a poor fund of knowledge, because of a poor fund of pious credit. We come to the idea that if there's an absolute truth, uh, he, she, or that must be impersonal. That's what's condemned. Is that okay? Yes, I have a follow-up, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, so the follow-up is that suppose you accept the conclusions of scriptures, the words of the previous acharyas, but let's say in, especially, in, well, I only have my experience to uh, speak of right now in, in ISKCON, there are various controversies floating around and, you know, if you spend any time on social media, you may get sucked into them or at least witness them. Um, and so what has happened with me, my husband and I, we spend many, many, many hours talking about these various controversies. And I spend even more hours churning them in my mind. And it's like, it, on the one hand, I accept what Srila Prabhupada says. I accept what's in the Bhagavatam. I accept Prabhupada's um, presentation of it, although others may disagree. And in the course of doing that, I... I, I, I'm, I don't like to use the word realization a lot because it implies that you're actually living your knowledge and I don't know if I'm always doing that, but I have um, insights or perspectives that may not be 100% repeating what Prabhupada says, but it's, Prabhupada says, preach, use, you know, uh, deliver the message in your own words. So I come up with my own words or I come up with different analogies or I come up with, you know, uh, different insights that don't contradict, but they're not always something that has been said before. So I'm wondering, is that mental speculating or is that philosophical speculating? And, you know, uh, should I be doing it? I mean, I can't stop, I can't help it. It's just a matter of, of whether or not I, I speak it, you know, for anybody else to hear. Well, I don't, it doesn't seem like it fits in the category of mental speculation. It's more like li literary creativity or something of that mm -hmm. nature. The, uh, it's, it doesn't, it's, as long as it reaches the same um, Vaishnav Siddhanta, there's no objection. Uh, I can tell you an experience from my personal life. Um, when I first, when I gave my first Bhagavatam class, the, uh, I don't think I was initiated yet, which meant I'd been left around for less than two months, but it, it wasn't such a big show then. And, and uh, we had only a few devotees. So I gave the class, the devotees were kind and let me uh, give it a shot. And I said, 
so many things. Uh, basically, uh, the conclusions that Prabhupada had given, but I, I was quite, uh, what's the word, reaching for ways to, for examples and analogies and so on. And after the class, uh, my god brother Ray Rama, who was one of the most senior and uh, well-versed devotees at that time, took me aside and said, uh, when we give the class, we try to repeat what the Swami has said. Mm. We try to repeat what the Swami has said. In other words, you don't have to, yeah, by getting a thumbs up from Prabhupada, you don't have to come up with so many inventive and new uh, ways to say things. If we uh, repeat what, what Srila Prabhupada has said, then we're doing uh, well. That's really our job. And we may say something sometimes with reference to some uh, example or what have you, but the real essence of it is to repeat what we find in Shastra and what we find from Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I remember there was the San Francisco Ratiyatra sometime in the 1970s. And it was quite a, it wasn't one of those very earliest. It was sometime in the 70s. And Srila Prabhupada, uh, it was quite a big deal. Of course, devotees came from centers all over. And it had been well arranged. The, the yes, all the programs were nicely fixed up, as Prabhupada would say. And the devotees had, the organizers had invited two local politicians to speak. Uh, you know, before the, as the rat was at its starting point, two local politicians were invited to say something to the crowd. So the first politician said something, you know, praising you, you talking about how San Francisco uh, thrives in diversity and how uh, wonderful it is to have festivals like this in our great city and so on. And he um, gave reference to his um, pending campaign for re-election and, and so on. So the typical political blah, blah. And then the second politician uh, was invited to speak. And he also made reference to his upcoming uh, campaign and or pending campaign. And he also talked about diversity and how wonderful it was to have this uh, festival in our great city. But he'd done some homework. So he uh, quoted several times from the Bhagavad Gita and said, you know, a little of this, a little of that, uh, with reference to Bhagavad Gita. So then it was Srila Prabhupada's turn to speak. And I was all in anticipation, uh, wondering how Srila Prabhupada would, you know, bounce off these, these two politicians especially the second fellow who had actually said something from Bhagavad Gita. How would Srila Prabhupada respond? So Srila Prabhupada began his lecture and said, uh, so as I have said, given the example many times, uh, that uh, just like the hand, uh, the hand cannot uh, be happy by taking the food in its own for itself. The hand has to put the food in the body. Uh, similarly, when there is a tree, uh, we cannot put the water uh, on the various leaves of the tree. We have to pour the water on the root of the tree. And from there, it will be distributed to all the leaves and branches. And Srila Prabhupada continued on from there and didn't say a word about anything that the politicians had said. <laughs> didn't even acknowledge their existence. 
he just chose to spoke from this as example from Srimad Bhagavatam, which as he'd said, as I have several times mentioned, which meant, you know, literally hundreds of times. And he never tired of, of giving these and other such examples from the Bhagavatam. And sometimes he would say something from uh, elsewhere, but the essence of what Srila Prabhupada did was simply to present what we find in Bhagavatam. So I hope that uh, speaks to the, the question raised. It does. I have further questions, but I don't want to, you know, monopolize and maybe I'll write to you about it. Okay. There are some, there's more stuff happening here. Let's see who's got what to say here. Oh, Dog and Shara was just listening to a lecture in which Srila Prabhupada said that devotees don't say, I think this, I think that. They quote from Shastra. Yes, Srila Prabhupada says in Bhagavad Gita, the process of speaking in spiritual circles is to say something upheld by the authority of Shastra. Yeah. Okay, anything else there? As far as the mystic powers of the yogis are concerned, they are also material entanglements on the path of spiritual realization. One German scholar who became a devotee of Godhead in India said that material science had already made laudable progress in duplicating, duplicating the mystic powers of the yogis. He therefore came to India not to learn the methods of the yogi's mystic powers, but to learn the path of transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord, as mentioned in the great scripture, Srimad Bhagavatam. Mystic powers can make a yogi materially powerful and thus give temporary relief from the miseries of birth, death, old age, and disease as other material sciences can also do. But such mystic powers can never be a permanent source of relief from these miseries. Therefore, according to the Bhagavata school, this path of religiosity is also a method of cheating its followers. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly defined that the most elevated and powerful mystic yogi is one who can constantly think of the Supreme Lord within his heart and engage in the loving service of the Lord. The path of worship of the innumerable devas or administrative demigods is still more hazardous and uncertain than the above mentioned processes of karmakanda and Ganakanda. This system of worshiping many gods, such as Durga, Shiva, Ganesh, Surya, and the impersonal Vishnu form, is accepted by persons who have been blinded by an intense desire for sense gratification. When properly executed in terms of the rites mentioned in the Shastras, which are now very difficult to perform in this age of want and scarcity. Such worship can certainly fulfill one's desires for sense gratification, but the success obtained by such methods is certainly transient, and it is only suitable, it is suitable only for a less intelligent person. That is the verdict of the Bhagavad Gita. No sane man should be satisfied by such temporary benefits. None of the three, none of the above mentioned three of the religious paths can deliver a person from the threefold miseries of material existence, namely miseries caused by the body and mind, 
miseries caused by other living entities and miseries caused by the demigods. The process of religion described in Srimad Bhagavatam, however, is able to give its followers permanent relief from the threefold miseries. The Bhagavatam describes the highest religious form, reinstatement of the living entity in his original position of transcendental loving service for the Supreme Lord, which is free from the infections of desires for sense gratification, fruitive work, and the culture of knowledge with the aim of merging into the absolute to become one with the Supreme Lord. Any process of religiosity based on sense gratification, gross or subtle, must be considered a pretentious religion because it is unable to give perpetual protection to its followers. The word prochita is significant. Pra means complete and udshita indicates rejection. Religiosity in the shape of fruitive work is directly a method of gross sense gratification, whereas the process of cultivating, of culturing spiritual knowledge with a view to becoming one with the absolute is a method of subtle sense gratification. All such pretentious religiosity based on gross or subtle sense gratification is completely rejected in the process of Bhagavad Dharma or the transcendental religion that is the eternal function of the living being. Well, I think we can stop here. Uh, and I'll bookmark it so I do know where we are. Good. Very important verse of call, of course, Dharma approach at the Kaita Votra. And Srila Prabhupada is giving quite the extensive commentary on it. So again, we can stop here and thank you all very much. Uh, do we want to have Kirtan for a couple of minutes before we disperse? Oh, country. Something to say to country. I, I'm speaking. Yes. Your audio is going in and out, I guess. Well, it's not that important. I was just hoping. No, nope, we're not hearing you. Remember. Maybe you're too distant from your microphone. Some other problem is there. Well, a microphone is practically in my mouth. Now we don't, can hear you. Yeah, don't move. Keep it there. Oh, yeah. Is that good? Yeah, you're good. Okay. I used to hear in my early days when I was a new devotee. The Srila Prabhupada says one of the Srila Prabhupada had said, if you begin to with my thing, you should finish it. I you didn't. Know, you went in and out, but it seems like you heard in the early days that Prabhupada said, if you begin a sentence with, I think you should begin it in the closet. I think that's the quote, if I remember. <laughs> yes? You finish it in the closet. Yeah, if you begin with, I think you should finish your your sentence in the closet. Yeah, that was a famous <laughs> Prabhupada said. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't. Thank you. I, I can't vouch for it by having directly heard it, but it, it certainly has been uh, a venerable Prabhupada said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Kanchi Ma. Thank you. Well, should we end up with Kirtan?
for two minutes or three or something along those lines. Panchatattva, what do you think? He's driving, I think. Oh, he's driving. My, uh, my uh, connection might come in and out. Uh, I see. I'm, in, I'm in the mountains in uh, the western side of Virginia, heading through West Virginia to other parts. <laughs> okay, he's on the road. All right, Project Acharya, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> a or maybe far. more like the, the merchant in the in the forest of material existence. Yeah, I think that's more on the mark right there. <laughs> At least I have Prophet's books with me and we're distributing some. But other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm right, right out there in the forest. Well, that's good <laughs> enough. Very good. All right. Oh, there you are, Hare Krishna. All right. Um, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dama, Hare Dama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Gaur Primanande, Hare Hare. Hare Bo! The best gift on yet. Hare Bo! <laughs> Thank you, Mara. That was so nice. We don't hear your kirtan sound. Yeah, yeah, come on. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Everybody's in ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> They're always in ecstasy. Just say goodbye. Hare Krishna. Feels like the force of spiritual enjoyment. Ha, 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 ha.